Hi, I'm just going to give a quick little um, comment on how to determine uh, which member is a zero force member. And um, you have to be careful with these because sometimes, especially when you get into more advanced topics, they can become almost necessary to have uh, just as a, a fail-safe or a redundancy. That, that These are okay sometimes. Um, it really depends off what your boss says. But anyway, let's just look at a segment of a truss design. It's very crooked, I know. And what we're going to do, and, and this continues on, um, what we're going to do is I'm going to say, what if we had a member that was drawn straight down like this? and it reached a point right here where where it's going not the members going right down into the middle of another member and we would just want to know if we use a joint analysis on that point is there any force even in this member and what you'll find is no not not when you're considering um even if you did a finite element analysis on this member, you would find that there is relatively no force um, being applied on this member. Now, conversely, there are members that are like this, which at first glance, you might think, is this a zero force? And one thing I might caution you about in that situation is um, if you have a design that is like this and even though the, the each of these is a point um, realize that what if you had a distributed load across the top what if you had um, you know some kind of load being pushed on these things and I'm just doing them at an angle just to show that it could be at whatever angle but what if you had a distributed load I still feel like this would pick up some of that load and it would just bring it down to um, you know this this joint B so B would be seeing a lot of force because you have three different members pushing down at B so this is not a zero force in my opinion. That is, if there is um, if there's distributed load on top of it, if you have a force pushing down on it directly. However, when you look at the other one, Unless it's uh, like a boat bridge or something like that, and you have distributed load on the bottom, um, what you'll find is that a direct force from a point B, all of the force would either go down to the left or down to the right. Because any force that would come down here would have nothing pushing back up on it to equal and opposite it out. It would actually cause deflection and in a finite element analysis um, you would see that a small amount of force would go but it would just go to deflecting the material and that's also that, that's pretty much just what you don't want. So, um, and let's just look at a joint analysis of that you'll have a beam going this way and you have a beam going this way and you have a beam pushing down and if you just look at that you have um, if I, this were A and this were B you would have sigma f of x equals zero thus A must equal B whereas if we say sigma fy is equal to zero, we just know that, uh, you know, force f must equal zero. And that's why they call it 
a zero force member because if you do a joint analysis at that single point you'll have a zero force in that particular um, member. Anyway, I hope this clears things up. Um, just be wary of what you call a, a, a zero force member because it, it's a, it can be a hasty assumption, especially if you have distributed loads being tossed everywhere. Um, this is not like a, an, a universal rule, and there are exceptions to it. Um, but in general, in vector statics, this is what would entail um, something to be a zero force member. And anyway, um, I'll see you guys in another video. Hope you enjoyed it.